What's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful shortened week in the stock market last week. It's actually pretty crazy. A little bit more action packed than I thought it would be given the historical low volume after a shortened week after Memorial Day. It was actually pretty action packed for the most part. If you tuned in last week, we actually had a pretty good list. We did have three on watch. We had McDonald's, which kind of had a rough start to the week. But towards the end of the week on Thursday and Friday, it really did pick up and actually closed over last Friday's close or at least around it. So you kind of had to be a little bit more patient with that one and kind of wait for it to get a little bit closer to lows because it did break that 78.6% Fibonacci level pretty much first thing on Tuesday. We also have Myrna puts on watch, which really needed to flush under Friday's low for a short signal. And that did pretty quick. And that thing just busted down very aggressively ended up going all the way to the nine EMA cloud pretty much instantly on the first day it broke down that level that we needed for the short trigger so those puts paid out a lot on the first day we also had Carvana as well there's a pretty simple gap fill play to the downside that actually triggered under the one day 21 EMA pretty much the first day that we started trading on Tuesday and filled the rest of the gap almost towards the end of the week there might be a little bit more gap left but for the most part it did fill like almost 75 percent of that gap so that was a pretty nice trade as well so it was a pretty good list i would say mcdonald's was kind of the lagger it took a couple days to kind of bounce and it didn't bounce off the support level we were looking for first thing i would definitely keep mcdonald's on watch still looking pretty good pretty much back to the same spot it closed last friday so it's like pretty much nothing changed from last week it just might have a potential bounce still in play here we also closed a couple winners as well had a couple losses as well this week, but those QCOM puts that I showed you I had open last week, also UAA calls, ended up closing both of those. So we made about $200 a contract on QCOM. UAA actually I sold a little bit early because I could have made a little bit more on Friday. And then I also had a little QQQ put scalp, made 20% on that. And then here's Friday's losses here. I actually tried to buy the dip on QQQ and SPY. I got stopped out pretty quick, maybe within 15 to 30 minutes a piece. So first I went long QQQ at pre-market support, busted down. I didn't feel like it was going to come back up, so I cut it at 50%. The reason why I had such a wide stop loss is because I went pretty small and I took one contract a piece, so I was willing to risk about maybe 100 bucks. And same thing with the second long I tried, SPY pulled into pre-market support, ended up breaking through that. I decided to give it to 50%, risk $100 again, with a total risk for the day about $230 that I ended up losing that day. So not too bad. Really, I just gave away my QCOM profits. Should be able to make that back on Monday or Tuesday, hopefully. Not going to force it, but that's the reason why those stop losses are so wide because I did go a little bit smaller. So if you see like a stop loss like this, it's probably because I went pretty small and I need to give it a little bit more margin to move. And if you see something more tight like this, like 13%, 16%, uh, 26%, it's probably because I went a little bit larger and I didn't want to handle you know, those big fluctuations in dollars. Same thing with Baidu here. I still have this open. If you want to go ahead and add that to your watch list, I am in August call. So we're in August. So we have about two months to go down 50%, only one contract for now. I might add later, but right now I'm not adding to it. So right now you could get a discount on this Baidu setup. I definitely would go a little bit closer to the money though. Maybe go directly at the money. Don't go up to 105s. A little bit too far out of the money now for me personally. And that's why I want to wait for it to get back up before adding again. Wait for it to get up, you know, back above 100 or so before adding another contract. So yeah, that was just a little highlight of the trades I took last week and also our trade ideas list. And now we'll go ahead and get into our economic calendar real quick. We'll try to get over this really quick so we can get into the setups. I don't want this video to drag out too long. Monday, we do have some big ones. We have S&P flash US manufacturing PMI and also ISM manufacturing so the PMIs are going to come out first at 9 45 second it's going to be the ISM manufacturing at 10 a.m these are both pretty big and that you will see some type of knee-jerk reaction these will be pretty good to day trade usually always is especially for ISM ISM manufacturing is especially volatile for price action Tuesday we do have a big labor market data set coming out it's going to be the jolts job openings pay attention to that at 10 a.m also Wednesday, the second part of ISM, we do have ISM services. So we have manufacturing Monday, services on Wednesday, also ADP employment. This is a hit or miss if it moves the market. And then we also have the services side of PMIs. So we have the S&P Flash US services at 945 on Wednesday, and we have manufacturing for PMIs on Monday. So you'll get PMIs and ISMs on Monday and also ISM and PMI part two on Wednesday as well. So those are pretty big 
definitely pay attention to them. And then Friday is going to be the big one of the week. It's going to be the non-farm payrolls. That's what this U.S. employment report is. That is the non-farm payrolls. It is the biggest labor market data set that comes out. We also get a hint into the unemployment rate and also hourly wages. So pretty stacked this week. Not a single Fed speaker. I don't see any on the list here. Maybe they could be wrong because usually we do have somebody yapping out their mouth from the Fed at least one day of the week, but we'll see. I don't think there's really any big Fed speakers. It would be in this data, but lots of big economic data coming out this week. PMIs, especially ISMs. Uh, we got Joe's job openings. We got non-farm payrolls. So lots of stuff going on this week. Have lots of time on your expiration, especially for the non-farm payrolls. It's a pretty big swinger. So, I mean, if you're wrong, you definitely want to have lots of time on expiration so you can deal with that drawdown risk just in case you are wrong. This is a big employment report. All right, now to seasonality, we'll try to brush through this real quick. So for our 20-year data set this week from June 3rd to the 7th, we do have winning trades at 55% over the last 20 years. We have summarized profit at 6%, so not bad. We actually have a little up thrust here. And then you can see the week after is when we start to average that historical pullback in June. If we go down to the 10 year, it's kind of similar, but actually the probability is better. But honestly, there is less of a sample size here. This is only 10 years of data, but we have winning trades at 70% over the last 10 years with a summarized profit at 11%. So the more recent years and recent market conditions were really good for this week. We'll just have to see how that goes. We do have a little up thrust here. I feel like the SPY and QQQ look decent, especially after that crazy run up on Friday. We did reclaim some big levels and we're kind of looking bullish again, at least until we start closing back under resistance levels again and seeing volatility ramp back up like we saw last week. But we'll go over those later. So you have the 10 year data set at 70% winning trades with the 20 year data set only at 55%. But either way, both are positive summarized profit. So that's good. So if you went long, this period, even on the 20 year or the 10 year, you probably would have came out positive with a positive summarized profit. All right, and we'll go ahead and get over our individual tickers first. So there's actually three this week again. Two of them are going to require a little bit more confirmation. So you're going to want to be patient with those. That's going to be Oxy and Uber. They both haven't broken out yet, but they are setting up to potentially. So Oxy has another piece of analysis here. Actually, we do have a 61.8% Fibonacci bounce. So I really like these 61.8 plays. It could be a rejection play or it could be a bounce. Really depends on what you're measuring. In this instance, we are measuring an uptrend. We're starting from low to high. It is now pulled back 61.8% of this rally. You can find 61.8% rejections as well. Do a down measurement. You can see that rejected the 50 right here if you're going from high to low. But in this instance, we are going from low to high. So it's pretty simple. We want to see Oxy breaking out of this, obviously. We want to see a nice, obvious one day bar close outside of it and all bars going forward once it breaks out, staying outside of it and not falling back within the downtrend as such. If it falls back within, that is an invalidation. If it starts breaking under the 61.8, that could also be an invalidation. Obviously, you can see price close under the 61.8 here, but the important thing is it closed back over it right here. Here. So we might see a 61.8% bounce at this rate now that we've closed back over it. We can go ahead and look at the moving averages real quick too. Obviously, those are pretty important. We do have the 200-day SMA. So the 200-day simple moving average right here, these dots. It was very short-term support here, broke back under it, but now we are closed back over it. Obviously, the 200 SMA was also a breakout point in this period right here. So we want to see price staying over the 200 SMA. We also want to getting back over the cloud here. So this red cloud is the 9 and 21 EMA as usual. We want to see it getting over that. That might require over 63s or so, 63.50 something like that. And eventually overall, it will need to get over this 50 SMA as well, which is this one right here above at the 65s. So for right now, if it does break out, you could use the 65 or the 50 EMA as a price target, just in case it wants to reject off of that. We've seen price do it plenty of times. It rejected off the 50 back here. It fell back under the 50 right here, rejected the 200 right here as well. So if you are trending below a moving average, sometimes it's wise to use them as price targets. And as well for the short term moving averages like the 9 and 21, you might want to wait for it to get over that as well to head to the next EMA. So I need to get over the 6350s or the 6320s, this little spot right here to get up to this next moving average right here. So that's for Oxy. Obviously, we're going to need uh, crude oil futures matching as well. Crude oil futures kind of started a little bit red tonight 
I think they were down maybe half a percent, but it does have strong support at $76 a barrel. So watch that $76 on the CL futures. You want to see that holding up. So that's for Oxy. Looking at calls, this is kind of a bullish falling wedge. Just needs to break out and confirm that before we see anything. All right, number two, we're going over Uber real quick, which has just been in an awful downtrend all the way from March. We actually took puts on this once it got to the $80 mark. I think it had a little bit more upside. So I had to deal with a little bit more drawdown on my puts because I entered out in this bar, but I still want to pull down into this bar, I believe. I think that was February 20th. So we got a pretty good two day swing on this. I did not trade it ever since that period though. And it's kind of been off my radar just because it's been so like ugly. I don't even know how to explain it. It broke this structure low right here. And ever since it's just been making lower highs, lower lows. But now we are getting into a pretty important spot. This is a really big kind of double top breakout back test area. You can see price broke over it right in this area, pulled in for a back test right here. And that really kind of set off that big momentum going up into the 80s. So this was a very important period right here that set up for this big momentum. You can see we actually pulled down into it right here, had a pretty nice short term bounce. But as you can see, still making lower highs and holding up this back test area at the 6350s. So we really need to see it getting outside of this downtrend before doing anything. You could even go down to the one hour, you can see it more clearly. This is the downtrend. We need it poking out of this and getting back up to there. If it can poke out of this, you're looking at 6850s, maybe this short term level as well at 6733. And there's a little bit of short term rejections right here too at the 65s, but I feel like it will need to get over 65 plus this downtrend in order to get up to these right here. So it's really just coiling and setting up for something potentially in the future. It's not confirmed yet, keep that in mind. Just definitely keep it on watch. You have really nice coiling off of the old back test level. It's not giving it up just yet. On the bright side as well, if this is wrong and doesn't end up playing out or anything, you have a really easy risk off level if it breaks under the 6350s or you just call it 63 flat. If it breaks 63 flat, it's probably time to start looking at something else. So you have a really easy risk off level and a really easy potential signal if it breaks out of that. And that's why I kind of like this setup. And also it's been selling off for over three months now, probably coming on to four months. So that's for Uber, looking at calls, need confirmation of downtrend, and it should be a pretty easy setup potentially. All right, and on to number three, which is IWM. We usually go over the indexes last, so I made IWM last, but this is a setup that I'm looking at for sure. So IWM really had a pretty nice rally up until Friday. It definitely wasn't as big as the SPY and QQQ, like the recovery just wasn't even on the same level. And I'll show you once you see SPY and QQQ, I mean, these were just massive swings. I mean, I haven't seen anything like that in a pretty long time. Basically, probably like a one in 100 type chance off the lows that SPY and QQQ ran. I mean, just SPY almost 10 points off the lows. It's just not heard of and QQQ recovering probably negative 1.5% or more into green territory. So it's just crazy. Huge swings the last maybe hour of the market open. You just don't see it like that all the time. It's a very low probability move. And it sucks because I actually did have spy and QQQ calls, but they hit my you know risk limit. I was only willing to risk $100 a piece on each one and it hit. So but they ran so heavy afterwards. I mean, spy calls, they closed at the sevens, I think. And I stopped out at $1 and as well as QQQ, I mean, got back up to the threes and I stopped out, you know, at the ones as well. So that sucked. The IWM here looking pretty nice. It's a pretty standard kind of inverse head and shoulders type formation maybe a little bit uglier, like the shoulders don't match low for low, but you do have that kind of formation where this could potentially turn into a higher low. You also have a one hour breakout, it's pretty clear. You get a test one, a test two, a test three rejection, now poking out of that, so that's a good sign on the one hour. And it's pretty simple, if this kind of holds the breakout, you really could see it curl up back up to supply, which is that rally base drop supply. You probably call it 210 or 209s or so you don't have to go exact level for level directly a supply if it gets close enough for you take profit that's what i do i don't exactly hold to the exact level all the time because you can't get faked out like that like it'll come up a couple pennies short and it'll be pretty pissed off so yeah it's pretty simple you also have 50 sma holding here you had it holding for this period it closed under right here but we had rally base rally demand here i'll get rid of it so you got rally you got a base candle rally 
pulled into rally base rally demand right here ran off of that held it up right here pulled into it right here bounced off right here so you got a couple times and a pretty clear strong base here at the rally base rally also a pretty big wick low off of this 50 sma right here as well which is obviously clear support minus this one close fake out under here once it got back over the momentum picked back up so the important thing is you're paying attention to each close each one day close is really going to give you the story even if it fakes out so you might have seen the story right here as being bearish since it closed under the 50 sma well then you could flip the next day once it closed back over so you see it closing back over you're like well it's holding demand it's back over the 50 sma it's probably going to go back up so just take each one day close at a time you know you might get faked out but definitely pay attention to the moving averages pay attention to demand supports etc you really don't have this 202 structure to 200 giving up at all so that's a pretty good sign that you know it's probably going to go back up also close back over the 921 combo or this cloud right here you are over the 921 also over the 50 kind of back in motion here to maybe head back up so it's pretty simple iwm looking at calls i'd probably only go with the june monthly's minimum right now if i'm day trading or scalping obviously i'd want to go a little bit shorter date but it really just depends but the breakout looks good you might have a couple of resistance levels here like the 20 is also a pretty big rejection here at the 207s so you might need to watch those as well but if you buy time as well you can kind of deal with that drawdown risk if it does reject and that's why having time is good just in case you don't know what's going to do at these old rejection points so that's for iwm looking at calls a couple ways to go about it but i definitely would probably go with june monthly's minimum i think those are the what are those 620s i think right now june 20th or june 21st i forget what the monthlies are but shouldn't be too bad and not too volatile either but yeah inverse head and shoulders looking pretty good obviously the inverse head and shoulders pattern doesn't get confirmed until you break the neckline which would be over 211s but we can kind of speculate here that this is a higher low holding and a potential shoulder formation to kind of head back up and we've done this before honestly on dvn as well it was a pretty old setup i think maybe from 2023 this is something very similar to this and we were able to find a really good trade that formed just like this it formed exactly like this and headed back up to the neckline you take profit once it gets to the neckline all right and on to the indexes so last week we were just focused on the 532.97 or the 533 plus your 524.61 that was kind of your trading range I mentioned you probably didn't want to get bearish in the market until you closed under the 524s so you got that here on thursday and that set you up for a pretty nice flush all the way down to 518s the only thing is that it only lasted two days so here's your close under the 524s that confirmed a potential bearish move down further it did that on friday all the way down to lows and then look i mean just look at this this is just insane you just don't see moves like this the last hour this is like one in 100 probability type maybe even less i mean this could be like one in 1000 type shit honestly like this is huge you just don't see the spy going up you know plus 0.68 percent on nothing i mean there's no fomc meeting there's really no data it was all like end of the month rebalancing algorithms probably lots of options trades getting put together and overall just caused a squeeze like this and you just don't see that unless you have fomc some type of big data in the pre-market etc you just don't see that the last hour a lot and that's why i call it a low probability move because you just don't see this all the time you probably won't see a move like this for a couple months maybe longer i did also like longs at the 524s if it pulled into it uh we really didn't pull into it though until thursday but like i said thursday ended up closing under it so here was thursday we actually get back over it really we tried to right here but at the open we did not hold up the back test area so i did not try to go long at this spot i didn't try to go long the market until friday and i was buying at this spot i got stopped out down here and i would have had to hold all the way to very low valuations to even get this move so it's just not good risk management and you know it sucks seeing it go back in your favor but you know, $200 won't be hard to make back. But for this week, it's the same levels, guys. Uh, 524.61 to 533. That's pretty much your max range. Unless it wants to close back under 524.60s, uh, you could kind of project down to the wick low of that Friday move, but that's about it. I mean, we got VIX crushed down 10% in one session. So we got volatility back to normal levels after being, I would say, elevated compared to where we've been. I mean, the VIX above 14 was very elevated compared to where we've been now we're back under that we're back at the lows kind of sucks we might see the market kind of be a little bit slower here but if it doesn't want to pull back into 424 it's definitely watch this for a dip by area again obviously you want to see it holding up in the actual session not like this day not like this day you didn't have wednesday or thursday holding up the back test area minus that one little 15 minute close that we just looked at this was the only close that we got over it 
and that met right with gap resistance as well. So it just wasn't a good setup. You want to see it pulling in from up here. You want to see it pulling in directly at the back test, or at least closer to it. I would say this was not close enough for me to add. You want to see something like this, but you want to see candles closing over it to add at the back test. Just like this. This is the kind of back test you want to see. You want to see it selling into it, holding it up, confirmation bars, and setting up for something like that. We just didn't get that last week. So the back test trade wasn't that good. And like I said, the close under 524 was pretty good for shorts. So you had maybe a short term scalp right here at the open. You had a later day scalp right here. You had a rejection off it directly right here. And honestly, looking back at this, I kind of feel stupid for trying to buy at this 521 level. But this week low looked so nice. I decided it was probably a pretty good shot to just scalp it back up I ended up getting stopped out very quick like i said so definitely just watch the 524 so if we can pull back down into that i really like a back test really we don't have any crazy resistance until you know 533 as usual you can probably even mark this little high right here since this high on this bar led to this little gap down you could definitely mark the 530 or 530 50 so that's a short term level you can watch as well you can go down to the one hour here's the 530 50 right here so if it gets up to that point you could look for put scalps on that maybe but right now with it being this vertical i really wouldn't want to try along at least until it pulls closer into 524s again maybe 525 flat and that's pretty much my take otherwise same levels as last week just watch the 533 mark that new 530 51 since we made a new resistance here on tuesday at least a short term one to lead to this gap down you could even mark the friday low which is going to meet right with that 78.6 percent fibonacci pretty much right here so really don't have to draw anything other than the fibonacci level from this high down to this low add an extension that'll give you this up here but the closest thing we want to see obviously 524 seeing it pull into that try long off that we do have a really nice reversal here though i mean a reclaim back over the back test it reclaimed over the lows here close over the high this bar back over the 921 ema combo so i mean it looks pretty good i just would really like to get a dip something you could add so you're not just chasing into this vertical bar pretty much if we open at the same spot on monday it just seems a little bit ridiculous trying to add right up there especially for like a scalp like a call scalp or something just seems a little bit high especially after a big vertical move like this all right and on to qqq which honestly i really liked puts on this better just due to the fact that friday we had already hit that 1.272 extension or the 459 sorry so we had the 459s or the 460 pretty much at the 1.272 here was friday's close at this spot at 458 it hit that level on friday and I'll show you Tuesday's open. We opened over it just a little bit on Tuesday. Right here on Tuesday, we got over it just a little bit. But then once we closed back under it Wednesday here, it really started to kind of lose that momentum and head back down to the back test at 449, which is your back test right here. So the 449 30s is a pretty big back test level. I mentioned longs could look pretty good there. Ended up flushing through that first thing on Friday. It did not respect that at all. So there was a decent back test trade here potentially, but we didn't get a reversal bar off of. Probably should have remembered that when I tried to long around this area as well. It just kept flushing through. There's no big 15 minute bar, no good reversal candle. I thought it just looked a little bit oversold and I gave it a whirl and it failed. But now we are closed back over that. So we're closed back over the 450s or the 449s. That's good. Closed back over the back test level. We are now closed back over the 9 and 21 EMA, or at least the 21. So here's the close right here at 450s. This is the 21. The nine is actually at 453. So we'll need to close back over 453s to get back in track over the nine, over the 21, over the 50, over all the moving averages. So that 453s will be a key close eventually. We'll need to get over that. But this does look like pretty good kind of 21 EMA bounce setup. Really big wick. I don't see a lot of people trying to short when you have a really big kind of lower shadow wick like this. This means pretty big buy pressure. Obviously, they can fake out. Here's a big buy pressure wick right here that turned into a gap down on wednesday so I had a pretty big wick up tuesday gap down on wednesday so big wicks like that aren't always a reversal signal so a big wick like this is not always going to turn into something like this a big lower shadow wick like this is not always going to turn into a big candle like this but those lower shadow wicks on the one day can kind of really give you some sentiment ideas on where buyers are at right now. They were very confident on this Friday close. I really wouldn't get bearish on QQQ again until it starts closing back under the 449s and the 450 level. You could even just wait for it to get under the 21 EMA, kind of like Carvana last week. Carvana needed to flush that 21 EMA, flush the rest of the week, almost filled the whole gap. QQQ tried to flush the 21 here, but close back over it back in one session. So very big fake out. I mean, volatility was looking good. We'll go over the VIX next. You'll kind of see how volatility was looking 
Lots of good signals for the market to go lower, but it got crushed again on Friday. And that's just kind of how quick things can change. But QQQ, potential back test and 21 EMA bounce set up here, maybe. I really would like to see it get back over Friday's high. Friday's high can fill up this little imbalance. We can go back to 459s. So it's similar to SPY. Like SPY, you can only project back up to 533s. QQQ, likewise, you can only project up to 459s or both are really, you can only project up to the 1.272 and that's really it. And I really wouldn't get bearish again until we're back under this. And for SPY, I wouldn't get bearish until we're back under this at 524s. And last but not least, we'll go over the VIX. So first thing here, you can kind of see this 200 SMA rejection. We'll go over that later. First, let's start off with our levels. So last week we were focused on 1237 as well as 1182 because this was Friday's close. So we were directly at 1182. You can see once we got over that 1237 here, first thing on Tuesday, that did bring momentum to get us up to the 13s, the 14s, etc. And you kind of have to go down to the shorter term time frames to see the respect of these levels. And seriously, I would mark these, like mark every single one that you see on my one day chart because eventually price might run into it and it's probably going to respect it. I showed you last week how it rejected off 1237, held up 1180s right here. Well, here's Tuesday. It gapped up first thing Tuesday morning morning it was holding 1237s as support here at five in the morning held that up all morning and that set us up for a volatility ramp up the rest of the day once again 1367 this was a huge volatility signal for us we wanted to see vix getting over 1367 till you get bearish on the market rightfully so this did kind of give me a potential setup so especially on the qqq that 20 percent move on the x trades app that i showed you i was able to take that a little bit more confidently because volatility was so high this one right here, this little 20 percenter. Volatility was more elevated. It was over key levels. And that was able to kind of help me get back into put mode a little bit. Obviously, I wanted to make more than 20 percent. But either way, I mean, I've been buying the dip for months. I really haven't been trading puts that much until recently. And that's due to these volatility signals. You got DXY, you got VIX, you got yields going higher, stuff like that. That's the stuff you want to see to make the market go lower. And we were getting that all week, at least until Thursday and Friday. But I mean, look at that 1367 key level I mentioned last week. Look at it holding up and it just doesn't get any better than that. I mean, you got a bounce here. You got a pull in right here, held it up really nice right here. And then once it lost it right here, this really set up for that big ramp up at the end of the day. You also have a pretty clean double top at, what is that, 1480s? So don't let people tell you that the VIX is not going to fall technicals because it is. And it's likely just due to the fact that VIX moves off of SPX options. It's going to go up higher based off put demand. And if VIX reaches a certain level, you might have algorithms programmed to buy puts or sell puts at certain levels. And that's kind of why it respects technicals, even though you can't directly trade the VIX. So you can't just like buy the VIX, you buy the options and that's how you hedge. You don't buy VIX shares or anything like that. There's no volume on it except for on the options and as well it doesn't move without the SPX options. So you can use VIX technicals, don't let anybody tell you that. I showed you week after week. I mean, it respects the levels. Here was that 1180 hold and these levels are very old. So that 1180s was all the way from December of 2023. That 1237s all the way from multi bottoms back in December 2023, January 2024, late March. So these are pretty old, yet still on this time frame. Last week and the week before that, it respects it basically to the penny. I mean, you can't make it up. Broke out over here, volatility picks up, pulled into it right here, volatility bounces, volatility bounces directly off it again. Volatility flushes once it loses it right here. So just go ahead and mark these guys. It's pretty important, especially if you're trying to make like a SPY or QQQ trade on the short term. You definitely want to check the VIX. So now we can look at the moving averages real quick. I mentioned last week, this 200 SMA, it would probably need to get over it honestly, for like a really big volatility signal. And I was really hoping that 1367 breakout would be big enough, but it just wasn't. I mean, it ran into the 200 SMA right here. It rejected off of it Thursday, kind of ran back up again on Friday, and then we rejected very aggressively off of it. So we might need to see that close over the 200 SMA now that we know recently it really rejected, we might want to see a close over that for a better volatility signal. The 1367 still worked good for the short term, but it really only gave you like two days. I mean, we closed over it one day, had a run up again on Friday and Thursday a little bit, and then it just totally got obliterated. So, I mean, it didn't last long. And that's probably why you need to see it closing over the 200 SMA. Like you see it back here, you got a big kind of breakout bar. It pulls into the 200 SMA in this area and you have way bigger volatility signals just given all the fact that it's over the 200 SMA, it's over the 921 EMA and it was over the 50 SMA as well. So once VIX gets over all the moving averages, you pretty much got momentum in your favor for the market to kind of shit the bed 
and head lower. Same thing for if you want to see volatility go lower, you want to see it trending under all the EMAs because it respects it pretty well. So for right now, I don't really see a reason for the VIX to go up, at least not until it gets back down to the 12s and the 1182 area. Same thing as last time. If it pulls back into it, it might try to hold back up and bounce again. But otherwise, I uh, just kind of wait for that 1367 before getting too bearish. This VIX bar is pretty bullish for the market. And it looks like the market's going to try to head higher. You got people with short volatility. I don't see any reason to long volatility here, at least until it gets back down to the 12s. 1237, 1182, same levels you've been covering. So yeah, it looks pretty uh, good to go lower here, at least a little bit lower before it taps the lows. And then you can be cautious again, because once it heads back down there, I mean, we have evidence of it trying to bounce off the 1237, off the 1182 multiple times. You got past data here showing that it's going to bounce off 1237 potentially, 1182. Wait for it to get back down there. If it gets back down there and you have a confirmation of holding, maybe you could try to short the market again. Otherwise, wait for that signal over 1367. Wait for that signal over the 200 SMA. One of those before you get too bearish on the market. Because right now it's just kind of mid-range. So I feel like it's just going to head lower and market can melt up a little bit more. So that's all I got for you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I love you. I'm going to get this chopped up, sent out. Might be a little bit late, but hopefully you guys still enjoy. I love you, and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet, or to discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with a trading mentor today, completely free of charge.